My name's Sarah Debore and welcome to Sarah Debore Yoga. We have got the gorgeous Jess hanging out with us today. How you doing, sweetie? Hmm? She's already been for a little paddle in the dam, so she's happy. We are going to be focusing on shoulder strength and mobility in today's class. And I don't know about you, but my shoulders certainly get really tight from a lot of hard work out here on my property. So we are going to be working to open them right on up today, but we're also going to be working on building some strength, which is certainly needed in our yoga practice. So when you're ready, let's come to a comfortable seat on your mat. It might be kneeling as I am or sitting cross-legged. If you have a yoga block or a book at home um, or a pillow, perhaps you'd like to sit on that. So um, that can just help elevate us in order to sit nice and tall. So once you're ready and seated, we're going to start with some gentle twisting and stretches. So breath in, arms reach up and overhead. And on the exhale, we'll twist to the right. So the left arm comes forward and the left hand lands on the outside of the right thigh. The back of the right hand comes into the bind and we'll breathe in to sit nice and tall. And exhale, just to work into that twist a little bit deeper. One more breath here. And on the next inhale, arms reach back and overhead. And exhale, let's twist to the other side. So right hand comes to the outside of the left thigh and the back of the left hand is into that half bind. Breath in, let's sit nice and tall. And exhale to twist a little bit deeper really working to draw that left shoulder back. One more breath here. And inhale, arms reach up and overhead. On the exhale, let's cactus the arms, maybe taking just a really gentle back bend. And inhale, right arm wraps underneath the left, taking hold of opposite shoulders. Breath in to release and exhale. Let's just take hold of opposite shoulders again. So switching side this time, right elbow is on top. And arms reach back up and overhead. Right fingertips come down to the mat, left arm stretches up and overhead. So feeling that nice full body stretch on the left side making sure that we're spiraling the chest open towards the ceiling or the sky so that we're looking underneath that left armpit. Inhale, both arms back overhead and exhale, left fingertips down to the ground, right arm stretches up and overhead. Remembering we're spiraling that chest open, so looking underneath that right armpit. And exhale, bringing both hands back up and overhead. Let's cactus the arms again. And this time, maybe we take our full eagle wrap of the arms. So right arm comes underneath the left and palms to touch or backs of the hands. And if this is not within your reach, then just taking hold of opposite shoulders again. So our right arm is underneath the left. Let's work to lift the elbows. Just filling up that opening through the backs of the shoulders. One more breath here. And on the inhale, let's release the arms, bring them back up and overhead. And on the exhale, let's cactus the arms again and this time left arm comes underneath the right. Taking the eagle wrap of the arms. Breath in, let's lift those elbows so that they're in line with our shoulders. And 
and one more breath. And exhale, unravel the arms, reach them up and overhead. Let's cactus them once more, taking maybe a little bit more of a back bend. And inhale, arms reach back up, and then let's come over into our tabletop position. So hands are directly underneath our shoulders, knees are underneath our hips. The breath in dips the belly, gaze comes up, and exhale to tuck everything under. Inhale to dip the belly, gaze lifts, and exhale tucking everything under. Inhale, dip the belly, gaze comes up. I want you to really think about drawing those shoulder blades down the back as you do this. And exhale, tucking everything under. Take two more in your own time. I'm just going to lose this shirt because it's starting to warm up. And when you're finished your final round, coming back to a neutral spine, Depending on where you are on your mat, you might need to walk those knees back a little bit further. We're coming into puppy pose. So the arms reach forward, hips are staying directly above the knees. And then we're just letting our chest melt down towards the mat. So the forehead can rest on the mat here. And if that's uncomfortable for you, then maybe think about taking that block or pillow or book that you might have started with and placing that underneath your forehead. Alternatively, if you want to take this a little bit deeper, you can come to rest on your chin. And closing down the eyes. While you're here, it might be nice to focus on the breath. I don't know about you, but I feel like I should be hanging out in this pose a lot more. And let's just come back out of puppy pose. We're just going to sink into child, so big Toes to touch, knees come out wide, sending the hips back, arms reach forward, and we'll make it an active child's pose. So coming onto the fingertips, we're making little sort of tent hands. So our arms are off of the mat, our fingertips are plugging into the mat, and it's like we're sort of drawing the mat towards us. So it, it's almost like we want to pull the mat towards us, but we're also working to sink the hips back towards the heels. Let's walk the fingers now over towards the right, drawing the left hip back. So feeling that stretch again once through the left side body. And inhale, walking the fingers back through center and over to the left, making sure that we draw that right hip back towards the right heel so that we really feel that stretch through the right side. Inhale, walking the fingertips back through center and coming back up to our tabletop position. Breath in, left leg extends back, right arm reaches forward, setting up for our bird dog. Breath in and exhale, right elbow comes to left knee. Inhale to extend and exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale to extend, and exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale to extend, the leg stays lifted, right hand comes to the mat, and let's kick stand the right shin out to 45 degrees, left arm lifts off into our supported side plank. So left arm is lifted, belly draws in and up, and maybe let's just take a gentle turn of the big toe on the left foot down towards the mat, just so that there's a little bit of internal rotation through that left leg. 
So just holding here for a moment, really drawing that belly in, left glute is active. And let's all lower that left foot now down to the mat. Really engage the core. Tent hands on the right finger, fingers or right hand should I say. So we're lifted high onto the right fingers and drawing that belly in, we're coming into gate pose. So left hand comes down the thigh as the right arm reaches to the sky. So once again, stretching through the side body. Doesn't it feel good? Windmill the hands back down to the mat and back to all fours. Breath in to dip the belly, gaze comes up. And exhale to tuck everything under. Once more, breath in, dips the belly. And exhale, tucking everything under. Coming back to neutral, right leg extends and left arm out in front. Really flexing those right toes towards the shin. And exhale, elbow comes to knee. Inhale to extend and exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale to extend and exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, extend and left hand comes to the mat. We kickstand that left leg out to the side as the right arm reaches up towards the sky into our supported side plank really engaging that right glute and taking that gentle turn of the right toes down towards the mat. Taking a few breaths here. Let's lower the top foot down towards the mat. We're going to tent those fingers on the left hand. So we press up onto the fingertips so we're making a tent hand. And then we're engaging the core, right hand comes down the thigh, left arm lifts to the sky, taking that stretch now on the left side. And windmilling the hands back down to the mat, onto all fours. Breath in to dip the belly, and exhale, tucking everything under. Coming back to neutral, let's tuck those toes and walk ourselves back into our toe squat. So remembering here, we're just moving the little toe out to the side so that our little toe gets in on the action. We're not here for super long, but long enough to reach up, arms come to the sky and exhale, twisting to the right. Inhale, arms back through center, and exhale, twisting to the left. Inhale, arms back up and overhead, and exhale, hands to the mat. And let's just pitter patter out those toes before we push up into our downward facing dog. And once you're here in down dog, pedaling through those legs. So taking any movement that feels good for your body, swaying the hips from side to side, or you might like to just come into stillness. But taking some time here to really work through the back of the legs so that we open up and wake them up ready for our slow flow today. On your breath in, let's ripple forward to high plank. And exhale, sending the hips back down dog. Inhale, ripple forward high plank, shoulders above wrists. And exhale, back to down dog. One more like that, breath in, ripple forward high plank. And exhale, taking the hips back to down dog. Let's come high onto the tippy toes 
and keeping those legs as straight as possible, the movement is going to come from our hips. We're going to take little pixie steps all the way to the top of the mat. So we lift one hip, foot comes forward, and then the other. And we're going to try and keep those hands flat on the mat as long as we can. And you might need to come up to fingertips as you get closer to the top. Once you reach the top, inhale, hands to shins, half lift. Really pinching those shoulder blades back together. And exhale to fold forward. Inhale, arms reach all the way up and overhead. And exhale, hands through heart center. Breath in, arms reach up. And on the exhale, taking the right hand down between the shoulder blades. Left hand can push that elbow down. And you might stay here, but if you're open enough, the left hand can come back behind and take the full Gomakasana grip. Breath in, draw the belly in, engage the glutes. And on the exhale, let's tip to the right. Inhale back through center. Release the arms, they both reach back up and overhead. And exhale, bending the left arm. Right hand comes to the top of the elbow and that right hand draws the elbow down. Maybe taking the full Gomakasana grip if it's within your reach. Breath in, draw the belly in, engage the glutes and exhale, leaning to the right. Inhale back through center, arms reach up and overhead and exhale, hinging at the hips to fold forward. Inhale, half lift and exhale to fold. So taking hold of opposite elbows here in our rag doll, releasing any tension in the head, neck or shoulders. Maybe nodding your head yes, shaking it no. And making sure that we're taking a little bit of that weight forward into the balls of the feet. You can have as generous a bend as you need in the knees. Releasing the hands down to the mat. Let's inhale, half lift, and exhale to fold. Inhale, half lift, and let's step the left leg back, dropping the back knee. Inhale, arms reach up and overhead, low lunge. Really working to switch on that left glute. The right heel drives into the mat, and it's like we're scissoring those legs in. Breath in and exhale, cactus the arms. Inhale, arms reach back overhead. And exhale, the arms sweep back and down towards the mat as we straighten through the front leg, half Hanuman. Really working to flex those toes towards the shin. Breath in, half lift and exhale to fold. Remembering you can have the um, back toes tucked for extra stability here. Breath in, bending through that front knee, arms reach back up, low lunge. Let's take a prayer above the head and bending at the elbows, the prayer comes to the back of the neck. Really engaging that left glute for stability here. Remembering you can have those back toes still tucked. Now let's really draw those elbows in and maybe we take a gentle back bend. Gaze comes up. Releasing the arms back up and overhead and exhale, hands come to frame the front foot. Let's push up into our runner's lunge. Breath in to beam the heart forward and exhale left foot steps to the top of the mat inhale half lift hands to shins 
exhale to fold. Inhale, half lift, and right foot steps back this time. Dropping the right knee, arms reach up and overhead, low lunge. Really engaging that right glute this time, lower belly draws in, gentle tuck of the tailbone. On the exhale, let's cactus the arms. And inhale, arms reach back overhead. Exhale, sweeping the hands back, right, left leg, should I say, straightens into our half Hanuman. Fingertips can be on the mat or sweeping back behind you. But we're definitely flexing those left toes. You can tuck the right toes for extra stability. Breath in, half lift, and exhale to fold a little bit deeper. I feel like my areas that need the most opening are my hammies and my shoulders. So hopefully you're enjoying this as much as I am today. On the breath in, let's bend back through that left knee, arms reach overhead, low lunge. And making that prayer above our heads, we hinge at the elbows and we take that prayer to the back of the neck. Right glute switches on, if it's not already. And on the exhale, maybe taking that gentle back bend, hugging the elbows in. Arms release back overhead, low lunge. And hands frame the front foot. We tuck the back toes and push up into our runner's lunge. Breath in to bring the heart forward. And exhale to step to the top of the mat. Breath in, half lift. And exhale to fold. Coming all the way up to standing, arms reach up and overhead. And exhale, hands to heart center, our Anjali Mudra. We're coming into our chair pose. So two options, either toe, big toe mounds um, to touch, and there's a gentle gap between the heels. Or alternatively, um, you can have the feet hip distance apart, which will really help with your balance and stability in this pose. So taking the choice on the feet that is going to suit you today. Breath in fingertips sweep the mat as we sit back into our Utkatasana chair. Making sure that we work to tuck the tailbone under and belly draws in. Let's reach up with the arms a little higher, trying to bring those forearms, or not forearms, the biceps by our ears. And on the exhale, arms come back behind us. We're gonna take a bind of the hands. So really working to roll the shoulders back. And maybe that little fist that you're making with your hands lifts off of your back. Drawing that belly in. One more breath here. And exhale, fold, keeping the bind. If you've got your feet together, maybe just heel toe them to hip width and take a little bend in those knees as we work to bring that fist up and overhead, releasing any tension in the neck and shoulders. Let's release the hands down to the mat. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Stepping back to our high plank, shoulders in line with wrists, glutes are engaged, really pushing through those hands, and right arm comes to the mat, left arm comes to the mat, forearm plank. Tucking that tailbone under, lower belly draws in and up. The neck is one straight line down the spine, so we're not craning our head up, or looking too far down. We're just looking at the space between our forearms. You can drop to your knees. Good. 
and let's all lower our bellies to the mat into our sphinx, untucking the toes. Whew. I'm a little bit exhausted this morning, so even that hold was a bit much for me. Let's work to plug those toes into the mat, the toenails, and breath in, we really draw that chest between the arms. So it's like we're drawing the chest forward, rolling the shoulders down and back. Glutes are engaged, kneecaps are lifted off of the mat. And pushing back to child's pose. Big toes to touch, knees come out wide. Breath in, tuck the toes and back to downward facing dog. Breath in, right leg lifts and exhale, peel open the hip, bending at the knee. Making sure that we're not dumping weight into that left shoulder. So bringing the right shoulder down. And exhale, right knee taps, right elbow. Inhale, shoot it back. Right foot now, steps behind the right wrist. And we come up into our warrior one. So left foot comes to 45 degrees as we stand up nice and strong, maybe heel toeing the feet slightly wider so that you're more like on train tracks than alignment of the heel to heel, like we would in our warrior two. Working to face the hips forward. And on the exhale, let's take the arms behind. Once again, we're taking the interlace of the fingers. We roll the shoulders back and beam the chest open. And on an exhale, let's come forward to our humble warrior. So the right shoulder comes inside the right knee. That bind of the hands is lifting, is lifting up and overhead. And make sure that we're not dumping our hip, our right hip isn't like swinging out to the right side of the mat. So bring that right hip back in alignment. And by alignment, I mean bring it back in towards the left. And releasing any tension in the neck. So the head should just be dangling. Coming back up to standing, releasing the arms. They lift back and up, up overhead into our warrior one. Hands come back down to the mat. We step back into our high plank. You can drop to your knees. Otherwise, left forearm comes to the mat, right forearm comes to the mat, into our forearm plank. Lower belly draws in, glutes are engaged. We're pushing through the heels. And on the next exhale, we lower back to our sphinx, untucking the toes. Toenails plug into the mat and we work to push the forearms into the mat and we draw the chest through the hands. Tucking back to our child's pose, big toes to touch. Knees come out wide. And pressing back up to our downward facing dog. Breath in, left leg lifts. And exhale, peel open the hip, bending at the knee. Taking that heel towards our butt. Making sure once again that we're not dumping weight now into the right shoulder this time. So lifting that right shoulder up just a little. And on the exhale, left knee taps, left elbow. Inhale, send it back. And this time left foot steps in behind the left wrist. Right foot comes to 45 and we rise up into our warrior one. Maybe just stepping the right foot out a little bit if you are finding it difficult to square the hips off to the front of the mat. 
So we're really working to bring the left hip crease back and the right hip crease forward. Making sure that we're still pushing weight down through the outer blade edge of the right foot. Arms sweep back behind us and we take an interlace of the fingers, maybe taking the opposite grip this time. So the opposite thumb on top, breath in, let's roll the shoulders back and down and draw that fist away from our butt. And on the next exhale, we dive down towards the mat, coming into our humble warrior. So drawing that fist up and overhead, releasing tension in the neck and making sure that we're bringing that left hip now over to the right. So we're not dumping the hip out to the side. It's drawing in towards the right, as is that left knee. Weight is even in the feet, so really pushing down through that right foot. And coming back up to standing, arms release out of that bind. They sweep back overhead, back to our warrior one. And hands come back down to the mat, stepping back into our high plank. Lower belly draws in and up. Right arm comes down to the mat. Left arm comes down to the mat, back into our forearm plank. Remembering you can drop your knees at any point. Drawing that belly in and up. Really working to push down through those forearms so that we dome through the shoulders. And lowering all the way down to the mat, Sphinx Pose. Breath in, roll the shoulders back. Pull the chest forward. Big toes pushed into the mat. And exhale through child's pose and back to our downward facing dog. Breath in, bend your knees. Exhale, pull up through the belly and either step or lightly hop to the top of the mat. Inhale, half lift and exhale to fold. Inhale, coming all the way up to standing. Arms reach overhead and exhale, hands through heart centre. Setting up your feet for our chair pose once again. So either having the big toe mounds to touch or feet are hip distance apart. I recommend maybe the feet hip distance apart for this one, unless you're really wanting to test your balance. So breath in, fingertips sweep the mat, arms reach up overhead. Tuck the tailbone under, belly draws in and up. Let's reach those arms up a little higher. And on the exhale, we're staying in chair, but the arms sweep back into arrowhead arms palms face down. Now really draw those shoulder blades together. So we're working through those shoulder blades. Our arms just aren't hanging out in space. We're drawing the lower points of the shoulder blades together. Palms are facing down. Maybe we come up onto our tippy toes. But only an option. And exhale, folding down to the mat. Hands come down to the mat. Inhale, half lift. And exhale to fold. Let's step back into our high plank. Lower chaturanga. Knees on or off. Inhale, up dog or baby cobra. And exhale back to our downward facing dog. Breath in, right leg lifts. And exhale, peel open the hip, bending at the knee. On the next exhale, right knee taps, right elbow. 
inhale, shoot it back. And right foot steps between the hands, coming up into our warrior two. So we've got our roughly heel to heel alignment here. And really bending deeply through that front knee. Shoulders are stacking above the hips. Breath in, reach forward for length, flip the palm and reverse warrior two. Let's bend at the elbow, right hand comes behind the head. Maybe we reach for the full Gomakasana grip. Releasing that Gomakasana grip if you've got it. Coming back to our warrior two. And straightening through the front leg as we reach forward for length and come into Trikonasana. So the back of the right hand comes to the inside of the right shin, left fingertips to the ceiling. Gaze can be up or down. Bending back through that front knee, back to our warrior two. Hands come to heart center and we straighten through that front leg, bending through the back one into Skandasana. So you might be on the ball of the left foot, but those right toes are lifted. Drawing the belly in and up and working to not use your hands to literally push it, but we're drawing that leg towards the left. So the bent knee, the left leg, is drawing out to the left so that we feel that opening through the inner thigh. Hands come down to the mat. Let's walk ourselves forward into our runner's lunge. Breath in to beam the heart forward and exhale, planting the hands, we step back into our high plank. Belly draws in and up. Right arm comes to the mat, left arm comes to the mat, forearm plank. Now we're working into our peak pose of dolphin. So from here, let's start walking those toes in. One little pixie step at a time, and you might need to take a bend in those knees. We push down through the forearms so that our chest shifts back. And then we straighten through those legs any amount. This is my most loathed of all yoga poses, which probably means that I need to be doing this way more. It's really good for us to strengthen through our shoulders. So we're really pushing those elbows and forearms into the mat. Let's walk those feet back a little bit. And take a generous bend in those knees. Maybe we try to push back up into our down dog. Don't worry if you couldn't do that. That's a really tough one. Breath in, ripple forward to high plank. Knees on or off, let's lower chaturanga. Inhale to up dog. And exhale back to down dog. Breath in, bend your knees. Exhale, pull up through the belly and step or jump to the top of your mat. Inhale, half lift, and exhale to fold. Let's come up to standing, breath in, arms reach up and overhead, and exhale, hands through heart center, by your side to dasna, shutting down the eyes, taking a few moments in standing meditation just to catch our breath. So dolphin pose is I would imagine for most people really tough. Um, it doesn't seem to get any easier for my body when I do that. And that's probably because I've got really tight shoulders. But it's really good for our strengthening in the shoulders to be practicing dolphin. We need to do that again to even up things on the other side. So let's blink open the eyes, taking the feet to hip distance. 
Let's sweep our fingertips on the floor and sit back into our Utkatasana chair pose. Belly draws in and up. Biceps lift towards the ears. And exhale, sweeping the hands behind us into arrowhead arms, palms face down. Our arms just aren't hanging out in space. We're drawing those shoulder blades together. So we're really pinching them together. Belly draws in and up. Maybe we come to our tippy toes. That is only a maybe if you're wanting to add a bit of extra heat. I think it's getting too hot for Jess because she's just taken herself off into a more shady spot. And exhale, heels to the mat if you've lifted them forward fold. Hands come to the mat. Inhale, half lift and exhale to fold. Stepping back to our high plank. Maybe you come straight back into down dog and wait in down dog. Otherwise we flow lower chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or baby cobra. And exhale back to our downward facing dog. Breath in, left leg lifts. Exhale, peel open the hip, bending at the knee, taking the heel towards our butt, leveling off through those shoulders. So right shoulder comes up. On the next exhale, left knee taps left elbow. Inhale, send it back. And exhale, left foot steps between the hands. We Bring the heel of the back foot to the mat, warrior two. Just checking on that alignment. So we've got roughly heel to heel alignment and it's a nice long stance so that we can bend deeply into that knee. Gaze is down the middle finger on the front hand. Making sure that we're pushing some weight into the outer blade edge of the right foot. Breath in, flip the front palm, reach forward for length and exhale, reverse warrior. Bending that left elbow, hand comes down behind the back. Maybe we take the full Gomakasana grip if it's within your reach. And if you've got that full grip, really leaning the head back into the arms. Releasing any grip of the hands back to our warrior two. We straighten through the front leg, getting ready for triangle. Breath in, reach forward for length. And exhale, left hand comes down towards the mat. Right arm reaches to the sky. So we use the back of that left hand to push into the shin and lever ourselves open. Remembering that you don't need to be all the way down to the mat with that left hand. So we're not aiming to get our fingertips to the mat. You might be all the way up here or down here, but whatever is going to feel comfortable for your body. It's not a competition to get down towards the mat. And once again in triangle, we're really drawing those shoulder blades together like we did when we're in chair with our arrowhead arms. We'll bend through that front knee, coming back to our warrior two, just for a moment. Hands come to prayer as we straighten through the left leg, right knee bend, scan dust at the back of the mat. Left toes are lifted, lower belly draws in, and we're working to draw that right knee out towards the side, feeling that nice opening through the inner thighs. Hands come down to the mat. We'll walk ourselves all the way back to the top, back to our runner's lunge. Breath in to beam the heart forward. And exhale, planting the hands. We step back into our high plank. From our high plank, left forearm comes to the mat, right arm comes to the mat. Really drawing that belly in. It's time for our dolphin pose. So we are walking those feet in. They don't need to be in super close, but as close as you can get them. And then we straighten through those legs, heels drop to the mat. 
we push through the forearms into the mat so that our chest moves back. Holding here for just another few breaths. I would like to talk you through this, but I need to focus myself. One more breath. And exhale, knees drop to the mat. Let's come to our child's pose. Whew. Maybe we need to start doing more dolphin in our classes. So that becomes a little bit easier. Well done, everybody. Maybe coming up onto your knees, having a quick drink if you've got water there. I did start off in the shade, but now I've ended up in full blazing sun. And when you're ready, we're just coming down to our belly. So lowering all the way down to your tummy. Our right arm is going to come out to the side. So um, if you're not quite sure what I mean, if, if I was laying on my tummy right now, it would come out like this with the right palm facing down. So right palm faces down, the left hand comes underneath the left shoulder and we use that left hand to roll over bringing the left foot to the other side of the mat, feeling that nice opening stretch through the right shoulder. And your foot can be wherever it feels comfortable. Maybe it feels more comfortable on top of the leg. For me, it's up in the air. Although if you'd like to multitask in this pose, you can bend through that knee and take hold of the ankle or the foot with the left hand. So we get that quad stretch. Meanwhile, I'm getting bitten by ants. One of the perils of practicing outdoors. Rolling back onto our tummies. Let's take the left arm out now to the mat. So palm face down, right hand underneath the shoulder and we come and push ourselves into that opening of the shoulder on the opposite side. Maybe taking hold of the left ankle or the right ankle should I say with the right hand multitasking with the quad stretch but this is totally not necessary it's just an added bonus if you've got the flexibility to reach that foot if you do have the quad stretch happening then releasing that ankle and rolling back onto your tummy we're going to set up now for a straight jacket. So let's come up into our seal pose, which is kind of like our, almost like a weird baby cobra. So hands are at the top of the mat and we're just pushing up through that back bend. We're going to thread the right arm underneath that left. And then we're going to lay back down onto that shoulder. So we can just take the half version or if you're really open through the shoulders, you might like to take the full version, in which case we take the left arm out to the side and we rest back down so that the head comes down onto that left arm. But for me today, I think one arm is just enough. So the weight of your body should be pressing down onto those arms or just onto the right arm. Thank you. 
we're going to bring this into a twist so keeping your arms where they are if you took the double arms then releasing the left hand but keeping the right arm underneath you we'll bring the left knee up the mat so bending that left knee it's like we're coming into a half frog pose so the inner seam of the leg and the foot is on the mat and then we use the left hand to push ourselves open into a twist so the left arm is just going to be sort of hanging out probably in space unless you're super flexible but I want you to keep that left knee on the mat and our right shoulder is on the mat so it's like our supine twist but we're in reverse And if that left arm hanging in space is uncomfortable for you, you can think about bending through the elbow and keeping the hand on the back of the head, like you're doing a weird half sort of crunch. But otherwise leaving it just hanging out here, which is really gonna help us open. And coming back onto our bellies. Coming back into our seal pose so that we can set up for that on the opposite side. So our hands are sort of at the top of the mat. They're a little bit wider than shoulder width. We push up. And this time our left arm is going to thread underneath the right palm face up as we lower our body down onto the mat. Remembering you can take the double option if you like, in which case the right arm will be in front and then you'll release onto the mat. But the half version is more than enough. And getting ready for our twist on this side. Let's bring the right knee up the mat. So it's like in our half frog. So the in, inner seam of the leg is on the mat. And then we use the right hand to sort of push us open. You might need to shimmy that hip, the left hip under. And then we open up so that the right arm is sort of just out here in space, hanging around. And remembering if this is too much on this right arm, you can just bend at the elbow and keep the hand behind the head. And this time we're not going to come back onto our tummy. We're simply going to roll onto our back. Soles of the feet come to the mat. You might need to shimmy yourself back in place and come through our bridge. So let's take our feet to hip distance apart. Maybe your fingertips can brush the back of the heels and breath in. We lift off of the mat, hips come up maybe we take an interlace of the hands underneath and if so we work to push that fist into the mat and roll the shoulders underneath us really lifting those hips up glutes are engaged belly draws in releasing the bind of the hands 
Now let's slowly lower ourselves back down to the mat, resting in neutral for just a moment. And let's take our feet out to the width of the mat. And we're just going to windscreen wipe around knees from side to side. So both knees drop to the right, and they come through centre, back to the left, to the right, to the left. So just opening up through those hips with a gentle twist as well. And coming back through centre, feet back to hip distance apart, right ankle crosses over the left knee and we thread the right hand through that gap as we take hold of either the front of the left shin or the back of the left thigh and then we recline back into our figure four flexing the right toes and really working to draw that left knee or left leg in towards the body while we push that right ankle into the knee releasing any grasp of the left leg or knee sole of the left foot comes to the mat right leg extends to the sky and taking an interlace of the hands behind the right thigh or behind the right shin or maybe you grab the right toe we're really flexing those right toes towards the shin maybe you extend the left leg long to the mat so just coming through a stretch of the back of the legs. You might like to take some ankle rolls while you're here. And if you do that, then making sure you even it up and go through some rolls on the other side. Right sole of the foot comes to the mat now. We release any grasp of the legs and left ankle crosses on top of that right knee. We thread the left hand through that gap and we take hold of either the front of the right shin or the back of the leg and then we recline back down to the mat. Flexing the left toes. I'm working to draw that right knee into the chest with the hands. As we push the left ankle into the right knee. Right foot comes to the mat, left leg extends long to the sky and taking an interlace of the hands behind the left thigh or behind the right calf or maybe you pistol grip the left toe, whatever is comfortable for you but we're flexing those left toes towards the shin, maybe you extend the right leg long. And once again if you'd like to take some ankle rolls through that left ankle making sure you take an even amount in one direction and then swap over and take an even amount in the other direction. And releasing the hands from that leg. Let's hug both knees in towards the chest giving ourselves a nice tight little squeeze. You might like to bring the head and shoulders off of the mat so that you tuck yourself into a tight little ball. Maybe you rock from side to side. There could be a happy baby here as well if you'd like to take it. If you're taking the happy baby, your hands can come to the back of the thighs, to the ankles or to the outer blade edges of the feet. that we haven't done a whole lot of opening up through the hamstrings, just a little bit. So this might be a little bit tight for you today. And if that's the case, then please do not force yourself into this 
pose, you don't even have to take it, or you can take one of the modifications. And then releasing the legs down to the mat, getting ready for your Shavasana. So legs extend long, feet drop out to the sides, palms face up, closing down the eyes. And doing a body scan from head to toes, making sure that you're not holding any tension. If you'd like to stay in Shavasana, then please feel free to stay here as long as you like. Otherwise, we're rolling on to our right side, keeping the eyes closed down and using the left hand to push ourselves up to a comfortable seat. That might be kneeling or cross-legged, trying to keep the eyes closed down. Palms come to touch at our Anjali Mudra Heart Center. Taking a gentle tuck of the chin, head bows down. Thank you so much for practicing with me. I hope your shoulders are feeling like a million bucks after that one. Namaste. Thank you, my name's Sarah Debore and you've been practicing with Sarah Debore Yoga. Jess, how are you doing over there in the shade? Hopefully a lot cooler than I am here in the sun. It's time for me to take Jess for a swim and even maybe think about jumping in the dam myself. I hope you have a lovely day. I'll see you again on the mat soon. If you liked class, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit like below and I will see you on the mat soon. Namaste. Oh, Jessie dog, you see movement. <laughs>